when I go back to my hood. Yeah. You know, I've got siblings, a brother who still lives in the house we grew up in, wow. and I try to go back as much as I can. And I always, when I go and visit with my brother and see him, I always take that walk up to the corner store. Wow. It's still there. Good for you. And, and I see those guys, you know, unfortunately, they've been there for a while, and unfortunately, they'll probably be there, you know, for another while. But when I see them, it, it reminds me of what hard work will do for you. Absolutely. And, and, and so I see them, and they're proud of me. You know, and that's the other thing about they remember me as that little snotty-nosed kid that they wouldn't let <laughs> hang out with them. You know, but they see me, and they know my history of playing for the Tigers and working for Harrington, and they're proud of me. And so yeah. I enjoy going back just so I can make them proud, Absolutely. you know? And so it's, a, it's extremely important that you stay grounded, yes. but you can't forget. And so I, I talked about these athletes who think that they have to go back and still hang out uh, with, with their, if, if those guys in, in, in their, their neighborhoods are still doing the same thing or not trying to do better, then you, you're you not looking down on them by not hanging around with them. I mean, you got to try to encourage them, but you got to understand that, you know, it's a different day for you Absolutely. as an athlete and you are looked at differently and you're held to a higher standard. Absolutely. And it's a business, that that's your job. And, and so you've got to make sure you keep all of that balance and understand that you don't have to feel bad about not hanging out with Absolutely. the fellas. Wow. Yeah, we've got to get in some more time together. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm talking with Mr. Ken Moody and uh, talking about making the leap from basketball to business. And the one thing that I ask athletes now, my wife and I, and fortunately I'm blessed to have a great wife, and I didn't realize this, but I guess I recalled, I was pretty excited about meeting everybody the other night, that uh, it skipped my memory. So I'm blessed to have a Gwendolyn in my life too. I've got a Gwendolyn as well. Yes, in, yes. yes indeed. <laughs> so uh, with that, the one thing that I typically ask athletes is, well, how much do you know about your sport? And of course they always pump their chest out and say, oh, I know everything. And then I say, well, how about business? Um, well, I mean, I, I don't know that much. So that's my purpose and mission in life, is to make all of these young men and young women uh, as good in business as they are in right. sports. And then we won't have to worry as much about them. But going back to that that you were saying about going back to visiting mm -hmm. the neighborhood, which as you said, is really fine. Yeah. But there's that uh, concept of growth and development, yeah. and um, we can only help those who are willing to help themselves. Exactly, right. Got one question to ask you. Okay. Now, when I went to your event, it's like I was visiting my wife's family because I always feel that I'm in a, um, a red tree forest when I go <laughs> back to uh, Pensacola to visit, visit family. And I felt that way, needless yeah. to say, <laughs> with your brothers too. Now, did you choose basketball or did basketball choose you? Um, basketball chose me. And then I, I guess it both ways. I yeah. kind of chose it too. But again, all of my older brothers played. Yeah. And so, um, you know, you look up to your older siblings. Yeah. And I couldn't convince them to come go play football. Uh, I could always, you know, we, we had, it's amazing how we, it was 11 of us in a, in a little small house. But everybody in the neighborhood came to our house because we had a big backyard and we had a basketball goal back there. And we had horseshoes. Oh, and so you could pitch horseshoes while you were waiting to play basketball. But I, cho I would say I chose basketball because, again, it was in the family. And my other brothers played and they were successful at it. And so, you know, I just figured that I should, you know, carry that banner as, as they did. And, and it, it turned out that they were probably better than I was uh, uh, during their era. But I was the one who was blessed with the opportunity to stay here. And so more people know me because of the basketball than they do my older brothers and sisters. But I, I tell you this, though. The best player in our family was my sister. Really? I had a sister that played. Her name was Crystal, and, and uh, she's still here. Uh, she was good. I mean, she really 
She set a standard for girls basketball in the city uh, in the late 70s, early 80s, and so she may have been, she was in the top three best players in the family. Oh, wow. Uh, and so, but I, I would say I chose basketball because, of course, you know, girls like basketball players and we wore shorts. And, <laughs> you know, football players wore the helmets, you couldn't see their faces, <laughs> and they had all that equipment, and so, uh, but basketball was just uh, the sport of choice in the Moody family, and yeah. so, uh, by the time it got to me, I was going to make sure that I continue that legacy. Wow. Well, I'll tell you that we are on a mission, and the work is plenty, and the laborers are few. Yes. Uh, my wife, Gwendolyn Tucker, and Tommy Thompson, uh, really, we have been a trio that's been working really, really hard. Uh, man, I'm really excited about what I hear from you. We're based out of the Memphis area, too, so maybe we can get together and uh, help to change some lives. And ladies and gentlemen, the thing that we would like to do is have you to uh, give me a shout at 901-870-7492. You can also reach me on the internet uh, by uh, emailing me at rexinternational at msn.com. And uh, you can like us on Facebook. And if you have any questions for Mr. Moody, you can send anything to me and we'll get it to him because we realize that there are a lot of um, young Ken Moody's that could either be athletes or business people. Right. So tell me about your, um, tell me about your favorite team. Basketball team yeah. it is. Is, it, is that allowed to ask that? Well, I mean, I, being <laughs> being a Memphian, I gotta say the Grizz. I, mean, I, I want <laughs> to be able to walk around and say, right. <laughs> but you know what's interesting in that in any sport, I really don't have a favorite team. I'm I'm a fan. You're a lover of the I, game. I am. I, I like watching the game because I, I like players, and I don't like certain entire teams, mm -hmm. but there's certain players on teams. Uh, has always been my favorite player wow. because I mean if you watch him I mean now he's up in age yeah. but if you go back and watch him from his first day of playing to now he always gives it his all absolutely I mean he always is going to play hard he's going to encourage his teammates and he'll every now and then say a few words that probably ain't fit for TV yeah. but it's all in his emotions absolutely. I mean you can tell the guy loves what he does, and he appreciates the opportunity uh, to play and to get paid well for it. And, and so I'm, I'm a sports fan. I don't really have favorite teams in any sports, but I do love the Grizzlies. I awesome. Don't. Yeah. Well, you did mention uh, one player, and that's current day. And I'll tell you, I, as you were talking about Garnett, I know that he's been in the league, and as they would say in the league, he's probably a, a senior. <laughs> he is. He is. <laughs> but, you know, I don't know if you recall last year, uh, in order to prove his point, he hit the deck what, maybe 15, 20 push-ups. Yeah, just to, exactly, yeah. right. <laughs> I mean, he's just a good, I mean, he's just so fun to watch because being a former basketball player, you know when a guy's giving it his all and he's just excited and energetic and yeah. the guy's always just been a class act. That's awesome. Yeah. And just thinking about giving it your all and being a class act and just even from the top of the show, uh, you really mentioned words that uh, describe that bring your A game right. and uh, as I said we're dedicating the entire year of the show to helping to make a positive difference in the lives of the athletes as well as their family members and our bring your A game for example uh, you know includes academics and athletics yes. and attitude and the associations that you have and also those anchors that foundation yeah, yeah. Um, on which these lives are built on when I talk about young people and talk about that bring your A game and that plan B and how we can help them develop their career, uh, I get really passionate about it. So people see me and they think, well, you know, that Ricky Tucker, Coach Ricks is this easy going kind of guy, but something seems to happen when he starts to talking about this. Right. And I can, I can sense that you've got that quiet passion um, and quiet energy uh, about yourself too. If we were to ask you of, you gave us a current day mm -hmm. uh, guy that you like. Uh, when you were growing up, everybody wanted to be like somebody. <laughs> Who was it that was your favorite player as you were growing up? Yeah, I mean, Dr. J was, uh, really? Julius Irving was, yeah. because again, of course he was a good basketball player on the court, but he was always respected off the court. You never heard any negativity surrounding his behavior or anything of that nature. Now, I'm sure he wasn't perfect. I'm sure he made mistakes. But, you know, when an athlete 
or something wrong, it's it's magnified. And, and you never heard uh, him uh, be uh, involved in anything negative. And so uh, I always looked up to uh, to Dr. J. I thought that he was just a class act on and off the court. Well, it's interesting that you mentioned that I saw him on a sports program uh, with some other uh, basketball greats, some were a little bit younger and all. And when I think of him, um, I do think of, of the epitome of, yes. of class. Right. And uh, that is a standard uh, for young people, be they males or females. Mm -hmm. uh, my wife and I have been fortunate enough to work with a young lady who uh, got her first professional job uh, mm -hmm. as an athlete, and she uh, she's Jasmine Watson. She plays in Romania. Yes. And there are two things, and I just spoke with her the other day, and I said, you know, there are two things about you that I really am excited one is you're Christian right. and you don't yeah. mind anybody That's knowing right. about it. Yes. And the other is, yes, you are a female mm -hmm. professional basketball player, but you always say to me, but I'm late. I'm yeah, a lady yeah. too. <laughs> so that's really important. Um, the one thing that I'd like to ask you to share with young people, because again, somehow there is a disconnect between people understanding the value of being on a team, mm -hmm. it's more than just playing yes. a game. I mean, it's work, and it's right. more than just playing a game. Right. You're actually learning how to work as a team, right. but not only that, you've got skills that you learn that you can transfer to right. business. Right. Tell me some of those skills that, uh, that you've learned. Yeah, the, the biggest problem is decision making, mm -hmm. because being a part of a team, uh, and I wasn't a point guard, but I, I always can imagine the importance of a point guard because a point guard has to make decisions based on life and that is he, he has to know who to pass the ball to when to pass the ball to that person how to pass the ball you know to that person so there's really a, a lot of life skills and in, in life you've got to when you're friends with someone or when you're communicating with someone you got to know how to communicate with that person you got to know when to communicate with that person and you got to know exactly what to say and so those decisions that you make in sports you have to realize that they, they only don't only affect you they're going to affect the entire team and so in life and in business it's that very same way when you make a business decision it does not just affect you it affects the entire organization the entire business and so as you're making those decisions on the court or on the field you know relate them to life because there's going to come a point in your life where you've got all those important decisions and you can I'm tell I can't tell you how many times that I've reverted back to my days on the court to help me make a decision off the court and so they go hand in hand you got to be in one of those A's that you talked about was the last one was the anchor. Mm -hmm. I mean, you got to be anchored, and once you're anchored, you understand the importance of the decisions that you make, and you make decisions based on that anchor. And as you said earlier, I mean, I could profess my faith in, in Lord, my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's where it is for me. Wow. And I know uh, that. He, he's an, uh, a loving God, and I know that he's a forgiving God. Yeah. Thank God he's a forgiving God. Absolutely. We're going to so, end on this high yeah. note. Everything I do is in, in Christ's name. Awesome. That's And I hated to jump in particularly yeah. there, but I wanted to stop at the top. Yes. And uh, we've run out of time, unfortunately. Yeah. And this has been a pleasure. And you really tied that nicely. Basketball to business, ladies and gentlemen, with Mr. Ken Moody. This has been The Best Of. I am your host, Ricky Tucker, or Coach Ricks. Don't forget to reach out to us, 901-870-7492, or Ricks International at msn.com, or Facebook us. Like us on Facebook at Ricky Tucker, Coach Ricks. Once again, this has been Coach Ricks with uh, Mr. Ken Moody. We'd like to thank you for being your best. And ladies and gentlemen, we want you to focus on always being your best.